Hey there riders, Moto Journo Chris and full details have been released on Harley Davidson's Pan America and to be honest, I'd say there's some people out there who should be eating humble pie, with the bike comparing very favourably in the segment at first glance of that full spec sheet. Now sure, it's going to be the ride which determines just where the Pan America sits in the scheme of things alongside that $32,000 right away price here in Australia, but I'm going to be honest, I'm impressed. It's clear that Harley had a good look at their competitors and have produced something competitive in arguably one of the strongest motorcycle segments at the moment, and I don't think you can really accuse them of just copying anyone else either. The Pan America's looks are certainly pretty unique, but that is of course a subjective area. The price at 32k does seem at the top end of things too, but at the same time, Harley haven't skimped and I don't think anyone was expecting a bargain basement ADV from them. But let's get into the details. The Pan Am is powered by the Revolution Max 1250 engine, a 60 degree V twin producing 150 horsepower and 127 newton meters of torque, with liquid cooling, double overhead cams, forged aluminium pistons, a 13 to 1 compression ratio, and knock sensor technology in case of low octane fuel use. It's easy to see Harley pulled out all the stops. There's also computer controlled variable valve timing for broader power and better fuel economy according to the manufacturer. A 90 degree firing order thanks to offset connecting rod journals brings expertise from Harley's flat track racing to the fore with four valve heads and cylinder heads with targeted heat treatment as they are incorporated chassis mounting points. Comparing to say the 1290 Super Adventure, you're down about 10 horsepower and 10 newton meters of torque. The curb weight is also quoted as 242 kilograms wet, which is also fairly competitive when you consider the Super Adventure claims a 221 kilo dry weight without fuel, liquids and such. There'll no doubt be those who criticise the Pan Am's weight as it's something easy to poke fun at with cruisers, however realistically speaking, their adventure bike is right in the mix. Triumph were claiming over 240 kilos dry on the Tiger 1200, while the Honda Africa Twin was 232 wet. Helping keep weight down on the Pan Am was the use of a MIG welded alloy steel trellis frame and an aluminium swing arm. Standard fitment is a set of cast aluminium wheels with a 19 inch front and 17 inch rear, which may seem a strange choice considering the emphasis they are placing on this bike being a true adventure capable machine. Michelin Scorcher Adventure tires are standard fitment, while the Anarchy Wild will be available through HD dealers for those after a knobby option. Of course, you'll really want spoked wheels if you're serious about this kind of riding, and it is a factory option and will be tubeless. Again, Harley may be criticised for this, but adventure means different things to different people, and many may not even leave the tarmac, with spoked wheels often being found on the up-spec ADV models as a result. Brembo provides the radial four-piston monoblock calipers, which are mated to 320mm rotors, while the front master cylinder is adjustable. Showa suspenders are also fitted, with 47mm inverted cartridge forks found on the front, boasting full adjustability and matched by a Showa piggyback reservoir shock, which also has an external preload adjuster for ease of use. Suspension travel is 190 mils at each end, so not quite at the same level as the Super Adventure R or Africa Twin, but still within the ballpark, aligning more closely with the top Tiger 1200. On the Pan Am Special, there's also upgraded semi-active shower suspension, which offers presets for differing off-road conditions. An 870mm seat height isn't particularly low, but the Super Adventure R sits at 880 in comparison, with the Africa Twin adjustable between 850 and 870, and the Tiger 1200 at 838 to 855. Electronics start with ride modes including Sport, Road, Rain, Off-Road and Off-Road Plus, and Harley do add a disclaimer to say that the bike is designed for moderate off-road use, not competition courses, rally, routes or similar. Their words, not mine. There's also linked cornering enhanced brakes with cornering ABS, cornering enhanced traction control, and drag torque slip control, plus you get hill hold control, a tyre pressure monitoring system, 6.8 TFT display, which includes a touchscreen, all LED lighting, and cruise control, and that is all standard. The fairly large 21 litre fuel tank is meant to be good for just over 400km too, which isn't bad. 
So overall, I'd say the Harley is looking very competitive on paper, with pricing again in the ballpark, if certainly on the premium end. The Harley Pan America is 32k here in Australia on the road. The Africa Twin Sports for comparison starts at 26100, while Triumph's Tiger 1200 variants are anywhere from 26 up to 32k right away, with which one you want to compare it to being probably a point of contention. I'm not yet seeing pricing on the Super Adventure R for 2021, however the 2020 model was 30k, with the S slightly cheaper by about $1000. It seems likely there'll be a bump in price for that version, but you never know. The Super Tenray from Yamaha meanwhile lands at 25.2 for a point of comparison. Adventure bikes being so strong as it stands is definitely a boon to the Pan America, and no doubt why it was built. But then looking at the vocal traditional Harley crowd, they don't exactly seem that open to change, or when you look at the reception of the street models, bikes that obviously aren't even aimed at them, but want to give the brand wider appeal. Also with the adventure segment, while there are riders out there who will be tackling some extremely tough terrain on these machines, there's plenty of people who use them just for touring with some good unsealed road or fire trail prowess, and the Pan Am seems to have those bases covered very well. Could they have introduced them at a lower price to get people interested? I mean, maybe, but then I doubt Harley are trying to take over the adventure segment, and this is a very advanced machine, really, particularly for Harley, when you consider the loadout, which may be a sign of things to come for their greater model line. The Bronx certainly had everyone talking, and while it may not sit well with traditional Harley riders to see these changes, at a certain point you need to move with the times or get left behind. Personally, I'm more interested in mid-capacity adventure bikes in that 800 to 900 cc region because they're more suitable for a rider of my size and needs, if I was buying at least. But I still think Harley have well and truly stepped into the ring with the Pan Am. It's easy to give Harley a hard time, but credit where credit is due. What's your thoughts on the Harley Davidson Pan America? Is it enough? Will you check one out? Or do you think they should stick to cruisers? Let me know in the comments and stay safe out there. Thanks for watching.